Well, hello, hello, and happy Sunday. And it is actually Super Bowl Sunday, the time that this uh, video is being released. And I should have looked this up before, but I think that it is between Kansas City and maybe Green Bay Packers, but I could be wrong. I just took a walk this morning and saw someone's uh, sidewalk say, go Packers. So I'm gonna assume maybe the Packers are in the Super Bowl. And I know Kansas City is definitely in the Super Bowl. But if that's not correct, don't yell at me. Uh, my, my husband would be super proud of me, not really, that I don't even know who's in the Super Bowl. But anyway, hopefully you are gonna have an, a good Sunday and maybe you'll sit back and watch the Super Bowl. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you is this month, it's February, so we're going to bring in a new series. It is from Linda Cumberland, and some of, the, some of you who are already a member, you're going to know she's got the sweetest voice in the whole wide world, I think so, and uh, you're going to love this series. She's talking a little bit about white space and how to create really nice, clean, clusters-filled, framed type of layouts. So if you want to watch the entire class, if you are a member, you can go to naods.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to either see login or you're going to see this little silhouette type of thing. Yours might have your picture in it. Mine does for some reason. Some of them are silhouettes. If you click on that, you can, if you're logged in already, you can log in from here and you can go to my library and that will be where your uh, academy is. So if you're not a member, we are going to be opening up the academy here in a few weeks. And you're also going to find out that we are having a four-day online summit. It's March the 9th through the 12th. This is the year 2020, so I don't know when you're watching this video. It could be years um, after, but if you are watching this uh, right in the January, February spot, then yes, you can come to our uh, online summit. It's $99 for non-members, and it's free for members. Back to this class here, if you want to watch the entire one-hour class with Linda. Just go in, log in, go to 2019 Members Classes. It's this one here. It's called Creating White Space with Linda. So hope you enjoy this 10-minute 10, 10 segment from this class. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Now, in our class tonight, we're going to look at some ways to effectively use white space as we create our layouts. But before we begin creating, let's talk just a little bit about white space, what it is, and why it matters in our layouts. So simply defined, white space is the area in your layout that is free of photos and elements. It's also known as negative space. Now this space can be white or it can be a colored background that you might add some texture to. You may also use digital papers, um, artistic or pattern papers to create your white space. Keep in mind, just because the name says white does not mean that the space must be white. I like to think of white space as another element, another way to draw attention to the most important part of our layout. That's your subject. So now that we know what white space is, why does it matter in our layouts? When white space is used effectively, it helps to direct the eye to your subject, which is the focal point of your layout. I like to think of the phrase, less is more, when I'm creating a white space layout. I don't necessarily want a lot going on around my subject that would distract or confuse my eye. I want my subject to basically, basically be up front and center. Now there's no general rule on how much white space must be left free of elements or pictures. That's entirely up to you, but keep in mind when you're working with white space, it's important to use it in a way that will always enhance the subject. You want, you want your eyes to be directed to your photo. When we choose to create with white space, we want to present layouts that are easy on the eyes as well as a layout that will invite the viewer into our creative world. Now, are there any questions? If not, I, we'll go ahead and move on. I do not see any questions as of now. Okay, great. Then let's go ahead and move on um, to our first 
white space layout. We're going to try to duplicate, I'm going to try to duplicate this layout for you. Now in this layout, I used elements and a background paper from my Autumn Blush collection. I also used actions and brushes from Gilbert's Bits of Bites to create the inked edge that you see around the background here, as well as around my frame and a brush to create this watercolor effect accents. And then I added a little text overlay by Angie Briggs. So our first step is going to be to create an inked edge background as well as an inked edge frame to use in our layout. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a white background first. I'm going to use my control minus to minimize this a little bit and we'll stick her right up here in my corner so I can kind of use that as my little cheat sheet. We're going to go to File, New, Blank File, or Control N on your keyboard. Our new, di uh, new file dialog box will open up and here's where you will place the width and the height that you like to scrap in. I use a 12 by 12, always a resolution of 300. We'll click OK and when the document opens, I'm going to go ahead and flood that document with white. You can click on your paint bucket tool in your tool bin or K on your keyboard and then just click anywhere in your file to flood it with white. Now because the action that we're going to use to create the inked edge requires a JPEG or PNG file, we need to save this as a JPEG before we can use the action. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'll go in here, and then I'm going to change my file to a JPEG. And I've already got it here. We'll name it Background Base, and then we'll click on Save. Now it's asking me if I want to replace this because it already exists, and I'll go ahead and say yes. And then this is your JPEG options. This is where you would uh, adjust the quality of the uh, file that you want to save. I always like to save between a 10 and a 12 and then you would click OK. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. My computer's been running a little bit slow and I don't know how long it'll take to save it. And since I already have it, we'll open that one. Once you've saved it, we'll go ahead and close this and we don't need to save that. We'll go to File, Open, and I'll now open the background base that I created. I'm going to use my Control Plus to enlarge it just a little bit to give you a little better view of what's going to take place. And then I'm going to navigate to the very bottom right hand corner of my elements and you see this folder right here and the little drop down menu. We're going to click on that and we're going to open up our actions and this is where our actions are loaded and where we will find the actions that we want to use. I'm going to be using Gilbert's Inked Edge Action and I'm going to use Edge 1 that is for my JPEG. You'll notice that there are five different actions in this, um, the five different edges, I'm sorry, in this action. One for each JPEG and one for a PNG. We'll go ahead and click play and then we'll just follow the directions as they appear on our screen. Now this says to me click continue if you have your file already open and we do so we will click continue. The next message is going to ask me to click continue and enter the width of the edge of the dialog box. We'll click and then I'm just going to change that to 25 pixels and I'll click OK and let the action do the rest. Now I will tell you that the edge, uh, edge one for the JPEG and Edge 1 for the PNG file, both will let you set the width of your inked edge. The others are preset for you, although they are different edges. We'll go ahead and close this. And then we're going to go ahead and link these two together. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a background paper. And we'll use this one here. I'm going to use a solid. And I'm going to place it right above my background here. Let's go ahead and name this. Whoops. What happened there? We'll name that one background. 
We'll name this inked edge paper. And I didn't say, but you'll notice that your inked edge is saved on a separate layer. And we'll go ahead and click and drag our background paper. Holding down my shift key, that will place it directly in the center and I'll bring it down below the inked edge paper. At this point, we'll go ahead and link all of those. And I'm linking those because if we should happen to bump one of these, they're all going to stay together. They'll move together and we won't get any of them off um, in the wrong direction. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity of this background paper because I don't want it that dark. So I'm going to go somewhere right about in here. I can also go over here and I'm going to use my dodge tool, which is this little tool right here. It's under enhance and I want a soft eraser. I'm sorry, soft brush. And I'll use my right bracket to increase the size of my brush. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just lighten softly in some places. I still want to keep some of the texture to show through, but I do want to lighten it up in just a few little places. I'm going to go up to my inked edge paper. Now at this um, stage, you can either leave your inked edge black and wait till later to change the color, or you can do it now. And since I know the color I'm going to use, I'll go ahead and change that color now. I'm going to go to my color chip and I'm going to go into my oranges by just sliding my bar up here. And I will, that's a good color right there. I'm going to go ahead and copy this for later use. And then I'm going to click OK. We're going to use Control U to open up our hue and saturation, or you can go to Enhance, Adjust Color, and the other drop down window here will then. Um, You'll, you'll then select Adjust Hue and Saturation. So we'll go ahead and click on Colorize here. And I'm going to bump up my saturation, watching this bar right down here. And that's about where I want it. And then we need to lighten it to bring in the color. And just lighten it until it's a shade where you want it, I think right about here. And then select OK. And now that we have our background paper, I'm going to go ahead and put that into my photo bin. And we're going to go ahead now and work on a basic um, frame template.